All right, so let's go into this timeline of what you wrote about. You wrote that, um, so they, uh, so Stephanie had been removed from her role in the executive chair position, and then they held the vote to put Vince back in, which was passed unanimously. And then the next day is when she wrote her resignation letter that went public. Right, right, and so, and, and and they announced the vote of the board directors right after they announced Stephanie's resignation and they announced the unanimous, uh, you know, vote. Jim, I think for, um, a lot of the fans and, and I, I sort of feel the same way, like for Stephanie to actually step down, step down this time, it almost feels like there has to be a bigger story or a, something that, you know, whether it's, a Maybe being working at the same company as her father with all those transgressions is going to be worse for her future or something like just for her to be able to just go. OK, I'm gone completely. Not on the board. Nothing. It seems like there has to be like a bigger reason than what we've heard so far. I agree. I don't know what it is, but um, like I said, if she would have left and taken a leave of absence and stayed on the board, um, I would have said, OK, you know, I mean, she was planning on doing that, you know, last year. But the way it went down and the complete break, I never saw the complete break coming. And, you know, again, like, I don't, I don't know her or that situation well enough to, you know, have a great idea of why, I mean, the little bit I know her, you know, is like, you know, it wouldn't, you know, again, you know, I, I just, you know, I mean, does she want to spend more time with her family? Yeah, I'm sure she does. I'm sure she does. But that wouldn't be the complete break. Um, that would be, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want the pressure of day-to-day -day CEO. But, you know, I mean, she grew up with the company. She loves the company. She really does love the company. Um, you know, it's, 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 I don't want to say it's all she knows because that's not fair. But it's, it's, it's much of what she knows. So the complete break... Yeah, I, um, you know, and I know people who know her and it's not like I've gotten a, a great story as to why, you know, I mean, obviously every day is stressful and every day is difficult. And yes, you know, like, let's face it, if you want a less stressful life, um, she has no economic pressures whatsoever for the rest of her life to where she you know, needs to be there and needs to work and needs to kill herself working um, or needs to take the time away from family. She doesn't need, she doesn't need the job. So there's that, but also because of who she is, you know, she could be in to a degree and, and she could be in it at, the, at whatever level she wants in theory to the complete break there. Obviously there's something there. Yeah. And then uh, you also wrote that uh, Vince rewrote the bylaws to give him the power to ch pretty much change the board whenever he wants. Yep, yep, yep. People can be removed for no reason. He can just do it whenever he wants. Yeah. The the leading stockholder. Well, the, the 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 you know he's he's the majority. He's got the majority of the voting shares. I mean, one of the things that was was you know so brilliant, and and it was done for a reason when they first went public, was that McMahon family shares had more voting power than you know the float than the normal shareholders so vince owns uh whatever it is 37 38 of the company but he has 81 percent of the voting power so his you know so so he's made money by selling you know 63 percent of the stock out there right while still maintaining almost all the voting power so when this thing happened that was his ace in the hole was that voting power you know and and Again, like maybe they never could have stopped it. Obviously, the board thought they could because they did have a vote on December 27th and voted not to bring him in. You know, so, I mean, they must have thought that that they had the the ability to, to not bring him in. But, you know, it, as it turned out, um, you know, they didn't. And, you know, we're playing uh, Monday morning quarterback here. But if if the board knew what was going to happen when they said no to him, do you think there would have been a different discussion or were just some of those people just of the opinion that if he comes back, it's bad for us anyway. So we have to oppose this. I don't know, but obviously, you know, there's, 
six people on that board on December 27th that are not there today. Yeah. So that tells you something. And, and three of them were removed. But I'm guessing that when Vince made the move, the three he picked were the three that he probably figured were opposition to him. You know, mm-hmm. the strong three of the strongest opposition were probably the ones that he picked to go. And then the two others, who, you know, again, he probably thought they left on their own. And then Stephanie, whatever the situation was with her, you know, her leaving. Uh, and then the last thing for I think you said you had a couple questions from from folks. Um, so you also wrote in the Observer that Nick Khan was the buffer between Vince and Steph. So there were some working issues between the two of them. As far as that is concerned. Yeah, I mean, you know, from what I gather, Steph, because of who she was and 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 Paul probably got it. I don't want to say they got it harder than other people, but as hard, if not harder, because I think the expectations were so high for them. So it's it's not easy, you know. Um, so. Um, but, yeah, he's, you know, because of his position. Um, yeah. At times he could be the buffer with, with them, with, them, and, and with Paul too. And then I, w- I want to make mention too, real quick, because um, the, um, you know, they're one of the stories and this is really the only one, you know, that, that came, you know, there's all these stories that came out all week about so many different things. And, and, um, but one of them was that, that they were opposed to the, to a sale. And from what I'm told is th- that's, um, you know, Paul and Stephanie, that they were not opposed to a sale. And they knew that, at some, you know, those Vince shares were an albatross. And at some point, somebody was going to have to get rid of those shares anyway, or, or Vince would take over. So, um, you know, the, you know, again, they were not, they were not like saying we have to sell. It's Vince who's pretty much made that call because of the timing. And, and, you know, maybe again, maybe he's, maybe he's farther along in the Saudi deal, which is maybe where those, those, those rumors came from. Um, and knew the timing and everything like that, because I mean, he jumped in, you know, for the sale, by the way, the, and they, but, but anyway, it's not like they are opposed to a sale. It's not like they championed a sale either. They were either way. Um, they had a talent meeting today, uh, before SmackDown, which basically they said exactly what you'd expect that the same management team is in charge. He's in Paul's in charge of creative. Um, Vince is only there for the sale, but he also said what we all say, what everyone says is that could change, you know, um, yeah. you know, so that's, that's where it stands today and, and it can change. And I know there's people who think it's a guaranteed lock that, that Vince will go back to creative at some point and by his track record, because he loves doing it, you can't say, no, that won't happen. So but we got to, you know, but it's so it's a wait and see. He loves doing it so much that when the Wall Street Journal article came out, he removed himself as the executive chair and kept himself as creative. Right. Well, that that that, that and that told you right there. Yeah. And and vowed he would never leave creative at the time. He told all <laughs> he told all the talent three weeks before he left that that he was not leaving 100. percent And then three weeks later, he was gone. Yeah, I gather that. Uh... So so like if if you're a wrestler in these talent meetings, you're probably going like whatever you yeah. know. It's like yeah. It's like it's like in three weeks, it's all going to change again, and and maybe it will. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.